Hello, I'm Richie Nimmo. I'm a senior lecturer in sociology at the University of Manchester in the UK, and I'd like to talk briefly about actor network theory, or ANT. Despite its name, ANT isn't exactly a theory, but is better thought of as an ontological and methodological orientation, a set of conceptual tools for thinking, or even a sensibility or way of seeing. It emerged in the 1980s out of constructivist approaches in social studies of science and technology, and from ethnographic studies of laboratory practice in particular. It then proliferated through the 90s and 2000s to become influential across a wide range of fields and disciplines in the social sciences and humanities. ANT has in turn been transformed by its engagement with these other fields, and it continues to change today in its various legacy and successor projects, so that defining ANT is always a partial exercise in translation. That being said, at its core, ANT can be understood as a radically relational and anti-essentialist sensibility, which resists prior distinctions between classes of phenomena along with taken-for-granted assumptions about their capacities. Instead, it seeks to trace how things become what they are and become significant only in and through their relations with multiple other things, in networks of relations or assemblages. This involves a distinctive way of thinking about agency, not as an exclusive capacity of human beings as conscious, reflexive and intentional actors, but as whatever makes a difference within an assemblage. In this view, agency is relational and is conceived of as distributed between the multiple actants that make up an assemblage, which includes not just human beings, but also a whole range of non-human entities, such as technologies, materials, texts and inscriptions, and non-human animals, all of which mediate, transform, and even enable what we might normally think of as human agency. So for a and agency is not essentially about conscious intentionality, though this is still relevant, but about complex entanglements, which foregrounds the role of contingency, of contradictions or frictions, and of unintended consequences in shaping what emerges from networks of multiple actants. This is significant for human-animal studies because it dispenses with a key pillar of anthropocentric thinking, the notion that human beings and their capacities are the given yardstick against which we must necessarily assess and measure the agency of all other animals, with the most human-like species therefore afforded greater capacity for agency than less readily anthropomorphized species. Instead, for ANT, it becomes meaningful to speak of the agency of bees, of earthworms, of bacteria or of viruses in a way that doesn't depend upon the cognitive characteristics of these organisms, but rather their role as actants within particular socio-technical or biosocial assemblages. As a mode of analysis, ANT is therefore profoundly agnostic, directing us to trace the networks of relations between all manner of things, human and non-human, material and symbolic, social and natural, without preconceived judgments about the roles played by different kinds of entities. This can be a very liberating way of thinking, and it opens up new ways of seeing in which human beings are no longer the autonomous, near-omnipotent beings of humanist ontology, but instead are constitutively entangled with multiple others in a radically heterogeneous world.